Clapton inspired lick of the week that you can use to replace one measure of the four chord in a standard 12 bar blues. Here we are in the key of A, first a demonstration. A one. slow starting on that four chord and it gets you back to the one let's break that down okay a close look at the fretboard getting started adding this speedy lick to your repertoire it sounds complex but actually it's quite simple especially when you break it up into two very easy to learn segments we're playing over a 12 bar in the key of A. So a basic chord progression like A dominant seven, D seven, and E dominant seven. Okay, our lick is going to be played over top of one measure of the four chord D seven. Okay, so one more time, it looks and sounds like this. A one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and a three, and a four, and a, and without my counting. And then that will get you back to the one. Okay, so we're using this solo in position called BB's box. The fastest way to find it is to locate the root note of the chord progression you're playing over top of on the B string. So if I'm playing over top of blues progression in A, I need to find an A note on the B string. That's going to be right here on the 10th fret of the B string, an A note. All right, from there, I can set up the BB's box solo in position. Okay, so that was frets 11, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12. Okay. And that right there all right, is the position that's used to create so many classic blues licks. Okay, now before we move on, there's a couple of overlapping positions that I want to make you aware of. This BB's box solo in shape is going to overlap with the A major pentatonic scale played in its C shape position and of course I'm referencing the caged system here. It's also important to recognize that the BB's box is going to overlap with the four chord, uh, D dominant seven, played in its E shape position. Okay, and that's going to be very useful because very often when we're soloing over the one, we're going to use the BB's box. And then when the four chord comes, we have the option to switch into the uh, D blues scale or maybe the D major pentatonic scale or a combination of them both. Okay, now that you understand that, we're ready to move on to learning the lick. We're going to break it up into two digestible segments. Okay, so let's get it into your ear one more time. A one, two, three, four, and... And real slow. Okay, breaking it up into two parts. Part one. All right, so it started with a double stop slide. We're sliding into the 11th fret of the G string and 10th fret of the B string. Okay, from there, we're going to hit the B string by itself and then walk down 12, 11, 10 on the high E string. One and two and the. Uh. All right, then part number two is gonna look and sound like this. Okay, so that was 13 on the B string with a slight bend. 10 on the high E, 
back, and then the 10th fret of the B string to the G string, and then back to the B string 10th fret. Okay, so right there at the end, 10, 11, 10. All right, you put those two parts together and we have real slow. And then you're back to the A shuffle. Okay, now let's see if we can put it into context. I'm gonna play through the progression and I'm gonna show you exactly where you can put it. Starting on the one chord, A7, a 12 bar blues. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The four chord. One, two, three, four. Right here. Then you're back to the one chord, A. The five chord, one, two, three, and here. And then back to the one for the turnaround. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. And of course, there are countless ways of wrapping up that progression. So many different turnarounds that you can feature. Or something like this. Just to name a few. Okay, now for our last stop today, we're going to see if we can transpose this lick to a different key. So let's say we're in the key of E dominant seven. All right, the progression in the key of E would start with E dominant seven, either strumming or shuffling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Then I have the four chord, A dominant seven. One, two, three, four, and now I need to transpose the lick. Find the E notes now, because we're in the key of E, on the B string, fifth fret, and let it rip. And then we're back to the one. All right, remember I can put it at the tail end of the progression too. The five chord, one, two, three, four, and. And then I'm back to the one chord. Just like that, we can transpose that lick. All right, if you're in the key of G, simply find yourself a G note on the eighth fret of the B string. All right, and just like that, we've just transposed to the key of G. Okay, excellent work today, everybody. Now you're armed with a very simple but extremely powerful mnemonic device. By finding the root note of the chord progression you're jamming over top of, you're always going to be able to transpose BB's box and all those sweet licks that utilize it on the fly. Now from here, discipline is the name of the game. So whenever we're learning new licks, remember, get it into your ear first, memorize the way it sounds. Then the next step is slow, careful, meticulous practice. Perfect practice makes perfect execution. And then from there, I would recommend putting yourself in as many musical situations as possible. So put on some backing tracks, uh, move around from key to key, and just get used to the, uh, the technique of transposing on the fly. I wanna thank my patrons for making all these lessons possible. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And friends, you can head over to patreon.com slash with lessons if you wanna download Guitar Pro. And I'm also gonna be making a sound slice for today's lesson. Until next time, this is Rob coming at you from the Jersey Shore saying happy picking.